So guys, we're here today to talk about some of the rank and file troops of the Protectorate of Menoth, in this case the Holy Zealots. So having a look just under the, the camera here, you'll be able to see that uh, that's some of the art that's on the front of the box, but we don't want to know what's on the front of the box, we want to know what's in it. What I've done in this case, uh, because these guys are mostly single, single cast sculpts, I've just stuck them onto their bases and put some ink on them straight away rather than cutting and coming back to them. So we'll have a look at some of the, the sculpts that are in it. Now, I've got 10 of the guys here. You only get uh, the minimum sized unit in the box, but uh, we got a couple of the extra blisters that you can get just to uh, increase the size of the unit. So if you have a look at the, under the close cam here, you can see this guy's the, the leader, and he's got his, uh, his big mace there. And these others are the three different types of sculpt that you get in the box. Um, there are only three. Um, even though there's 10 guys, there are only three, but, but once you get them all together, if you'll see when I put them all under here, you'll see that once they get mixed up, there's, uh, there's, there's quite, a, quite a bit of variety. I mean, it, it doesn't look like they're all uh, the same uh, as much as you would expect. So if you look there, that's the, the size of the 10-man 10, uh, 10 unit. Um, quite big, quite a cloud of guys if you're going to be running those, uh, that swarm around on a four by four table, uh, trying to <laughs> throw their firebombs, which is what they do. I mean, basically these guys are gonna be your your fast assaulting type uh, infantry. They're, they're light armored, uh, their defense isn't very high, their armor isn't very high. Uh, they can be hit typically on average rolls by anybody who's got a, a, a mat or a rat of about six. I mean, they're, they're gonna be hitting them uh, reasonably easily. But saying that, that's why you're getting these guys. These guys are, are there to throw themselves at the enemy and to, and to try and destroy them. The, their main weapon is a firebomb, which is a, a small AOE explosion. They, they can only throw it, wait for this now, they can only throw it five inches. Um, and the explosion is three, so it's a three inch AOE that they throw five inches. Um, as you can imagine, with a bit of scatter on that, the chances are it could blow back and, uh, and, hit, and hit them if they're, if they're throwing it from a, from a very short range. But that's what you want them for. You want them to go in there. They're a, they're a, unit, a unit of terror, almost. You're going to throw them in against your enemy and start chucking firebombs about at, uh, at five inches, not really caring whether you hit yourself or whether you don't. Um, they have a mace as well, but their mace isn't very good either. Uh, it's, it's only a par seven. Um, as well as which, of course, their basic statistics, their, uh, their mat and their rat, is only four as well. Um, and as we know, when we're talking War Machine, we're talking six is, is, is reasonably good. That's what you're talking is about, is about average um, or a medium level. These guys are, are below that. Um, however, not, not to be outdone by anybody else, they do have some prayers that they can utter to the, the god Menoth to help them. So their leader, this guy with the, uh, with the big mace, has two different prayers that he can use. One is fervor, and that gives them a plus two to their attack rolls and a plus two to their damage rolls which as you can imagine is pretty good because that's gonna boost them up to that precious six, that average roll. So uh, when they're throwing their, their bombs, if you've got that fervor prayer uttered on them, then they're gonna be rat six when they're throwing it. They're also a plus two in their damage roll. So that's gonna put the par their, their fire bombs up. So let's have a look. That's a par 12 on the fire bomb. So that goes up to a par 14 on a direct hit. But if it's a scatter and if it's a blast, as we know, you cut the par in half which would put that down to a six normally. But because the prayer is plus two, that puts that up to eight. So it's not six when they've got that prayer on them, it's an eight, which can make all the difference when you're, when you're making those precious blast rolls to try and remove some, some enemy infantry. Other than that, their other prayer is a warding prayer, which stops them being hit by uh, spells. So no spells are gonna target them and uh, they can sort of run about well, things like cricks perhaps, uh, can't hit them with hellfire and stuff like that because the last thing you want is for one of these guys to get blasted with, uh, with hellfire and, uh, or, or, any, or even just anything that would, that's gonna cause them to run off the field. I mean, uh, their command is okay, it's not, it's not brilliant, it's, it's command eight, but uh, still, yeah, really you don't want them to be facing anything more, uh, anything harder than, uh, <laughs> than themselves really. But saying that, 
like I say, they're, they're a skirmishing unit. They're a unit uh, used to harass your enemy, to terrorize them, uh, run them up the flanks, run them in round the side, because basically they're going to be running everywhere until they come to their, to throw their fire bombs. Because with a range of five, really, they're, they're not going to be hitting anything from, 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 from any distance away. They're going to have to get right up into the, into the enemy units to start throwing things. However, what we also have with them is their unit attachment. He's called the monolith bearer. Now, if you check this out under the close camera, you'll see this guy. He comes separately, of course. He's not in the, in the box. He comes in a separate blister, as most of the unit attachments do. But this guy, look at the size of the holy emblem that he's carrying. That's the Menifix, the symbol of Menoth. And as you can see, this guy is just lugging that about on his shoulder. What does he do? Well, you attach him to the unit of, uh, of holy zealots. So you pay your extra couple of points. Basic size, small size unit of zealots is four points. Big size, six. If you're going, you can only buy one of these guys, one of these monolith bearers, and he costs you an extra two. So he's, the, he's about the price of a, of a decent, of decent solo. And for protector of men off, as we all know, two points would get you a paladin of the wall. So if you want to attach one of these guys, I would stick him with one of the, the big size units of holy zealots. No point in going small when you're gonna when you can only field one of these these guys. What can he do? Well. He's a commander, so he increases their command because his command score is higher than the leader's. So higher than higher than this guy, who uh, who normally runs with the uh, with the holy zealots. He also has a number of powers that he can give them. Uh, he gives them fearless, which is good if you're facing things like cricks, guys who have terror, uh, pistol wraiths, all sorts of nasty monstrosities that might charge these guys. They they know no fear once they've got. Uh, a holy symbol of that size getting uh, carted around with them, so uh, they're definitely going to hang around whenever, uh, whenever this guy's about. They also have one of the, the uh, arguably one of the best powers in the game. Although giving it to these guys, I don't know whether that means that it's it's the best power or whether it's uh, it's only as good as the unit itself. It's greater destiny. Once per game, you can give them a greater destiny. That means that they don't take any damage. That's uh, no damage at all unless the damage is delivered by a feat or by a spell. So you can imagine charging these guys into a big unit of, I don't know, expensive, uh, expensive troops and just letting them run riot for a turn uh, when they can't be killed is, is going to cause havoc in, uh, in, your, enemies, in, your, en in your enemy front lines. Um, it makes them one of the best tar pit units um, that Protectorate can probably get. Expensive, mind you. I mean, you're talking that's eight points for a full size unit of these guys plus your monolith bearer. So for eight points, is it worth it for one round when they can't be killed? I don't know. I, I, I've I've played it before and I've had reasonably good success with it. It's one of those units that once you've got the big size of guys here, the big ten ten man unit with the the extra monolith bearer, you, your your opponent really can't can't ignore it. They have to deal with it somehow. Um, usually that's by trying to drop uh, a large AOE on it to try and blast them and, and kill them that way. But if you ex expect that one of those is going to come in, then that's the time to drop Greater Destiny and you're not going to get damaged at all. So finally then, he has his uh, Holy Monolith. So uh, when one of these guys is destroyed, because of the uh, massive men effects that he's got, all the rest of the, uh, the unit gets plus four armor for... Uh, for one turn. Now, unfortunately, it's not cumulative. So if, uh, if two of these guys get, get destroyed, it's not going to give you eight. It only gives you plus four. But that goes from turn to turn. So if one guy's killed uh, and taken off, that gives them all plus four armor. If then the next turn, another guy's killed, that gives them another four, plus four for another turn. Not plus eight, but plus four for one turn, then plus four for another turn. So it, it makes them a lot more survivable. Again, it means the monolith bearer is really a, a good attachment. A good, it's going to give them a lot more survivability. They're going to get right in there. They're going to be able to throw their bombs and, uh, and really make a mess of, uh, of something that you're aiming them at. However, the monolith bearer, unfortunately, uh, is unique. So if he gets killed, you're going to uh, lose a lot of your stuff. Uh, so, you know, you're no more... Uh, no more uh, holy monolith and no more greater destiny, but horses for courses. If you if you want to field them, then that's the best way to go. Uh, smaller units of, of holy zealots, the six man units, are good in small games for running around, harassing, throwing firebombs. Just general fun. I mean, that's the sort of thing that uh, that 
Protector is good at. There are other spells out there from Warcasters and from uh, other solos and things like that that can really give these guys a good boost. So tell me what you think of the Holy Zealots. Are they worth it? Um, do you feel them often when you play Protectorate? Um, they're the first guys that I ever painted when I first started playing War Machine. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's plenty of, uh, of cloth and things on them. They take a wash really well. And, uh, and they're generally, they're, they're a bit easy to paint um, just because they don't have a huge amount of detail. It's all mostly cloth. It's all their big robes and, and things like that. So they're good fun to have a go at. So post some comments for me below and tell me what you think of the Holy Zealots for the Protectorate of Menoth.